Now that's what I call a good looking crew. Love the wenches, yes. I am Captain Rick Greaves at your service. I'm going to tell you about first myself, of course, and I want you then to hear about some of my friends that were in the same profession that I was in the Caribbean. But let me give you an idea of how it was when I was there. This was truly the time. This was truly the time to make a lot of money if you were a pirate or a privateer. There were some, some risks involved, but it was a good time for us. Aye, it was. This was truly the golden age of piracy. I was active, they say a pirate, I'd rather say I was an entrepreneur. I chose what I was going to do. Now, the way it started was, my father was apparently on the wrong side of the English-Spanish War. And he got grabbed and he got taken to a trial, and guess what? He got sold into slavery along with my mother. Now, I don't even remember this. They ended up going off to Barbados, and that was the first thing I remember. Now, I didn't have anything to do with this war, but guess what? I was born a slave also. Now, it wasn't really too bad. The guy that owned me, he was pretty nice. He, uh, you know, fed us decently. This wasn't a problem. But he died. My parents died. So what I did, I just snuck off and I swam out to a ship that was in the uh, cove there. And I hid on the ship. I hid on it for three days and then I started getting hungry. So I came out and I was looking for food and they grabbed me, sure enough. And they dragged me to the captain. Captain Hawkins was his name. And he came up to me and he gave me two choices. He said, Boy, you can join us, or, and he put his hand on his musket, didn't leave me much of a choice, so I said, okay, I will join you, and I became a pirate with him. Now, I got a pretty fair amount of booty in my day, I will say, a lot of it, got a whole bag of it here, got a whole bag of it, you ever see that? These are pieces of seven. Now, I know what you're thinking. They were pieces of eight. They were up until a little bit ago, and then a couple of pirates named Standard and Poor's devalued everything. <laughs> so, what can I tell you? Now I've got those. In fact, I'm uh, going to give a little of that out later. Here is one of my friends, Captain Sir Henry Morgan. Now, he was a privateer. He was sent out against the Spanish colonies in the Caribbean. I've told you the difference between pirates and privateers, and I hope you remember. I'm going to do a test later. His orders were to undermine the authority of the Spanish in the Caribbean. The deal was he didn't get paid. He could collect all the booty he could off of ships, off of the ports. The deal was split it. Send half of it back to us, you keep the other half. Now. For the most part, privateers did that. Sometimes, sometimes they didn't. Occasionally, a privateer would say, well, wait a minute. What are we sending them back uh, half of the stuff for? Why don't we keep it? And they'd pull down their flag and they put up the uh, pirate flag. As to S. Cuba, in 1667, he stormed Cuba. He took the place and he took the booty and he took the prisoners. That was good for him. He showed how skilled he was. He was a commander. He had experience. He was a ship's captain. He knew what he was doing. From Cuba, he took Portobello. That's in modern day Panama, which was a very, very rich port. And he got a lot of booty at that time. And you know, 
He does live on today. His fame has followed him in many places and maybe even on this ship. You might just uh, find one of his pictures in one of the pubs here. Now, here's a little thing that might surprise some of you. Not all of the pirates were men. The fairer sex were represented. Now, you see these two uh, ladies on the left? You will not find the likes of them on JDate or Match.com. No way. And the guy on the right with his flashy look and all that, well, that is Calico Jack Rackham. Why is he so special? He wasn't near as good as I was. He wasn't as successful as Morgan. And he wasn't as bad as Blackbeard, Blackbeard was said to have been. So he wasn't in the top ten. But what he did, he always wore these very fancy colored Calico shirts. So they called him Calico Jack. What was really notable, though, were two of his crew members. Well, let me tell you about Jack here. He started pirate about 1715, and about 1717, he took an amnesty. They were giving out amnesties to stop pirates from being pirates. So the governor of the Bahamas gave him one, he took it, and he was relaxing. Then he met a lady. Ah, he was taken by her. He met Anne Bonny. She had everything. She was perfect for him. She had one minor flaw, and it was called a husband. <laughs> so you know what? He decided he's going to do what any other pirate would do. He went up to the husband and he said, Your wife and I are in love. And you know what? I'd like to buy her off of you. Uh, no sale. Another version has the two of them getting together, going and living in Louisiana as friends. Now, I went through the archives on the internet and I found what purports to be a picture of them after they went to Virginia. Could be. Now, you know I have to tell you about the baddest guy around, the baddest guy around, the most infamous pirate, Blackbeard. You see the smoke there? He would take cannon fuse and put it in his hair and under his cap, and when he was about to board a ship, cannon fuse burns very slowly and it smokes, and he'd start it and he'd go on the ship and his head would be enshrouded in smoke and it said that that was enough to scare anybody on that ship. A lot of ships, when they knew it was Blackbeard, they just gave up. So the action, Mel took it to the United States Supreme Court and the United States Supreme Court in its infinite, in, infinite wisdom said, Mel, you got it. It's yours. That was it. His. The treasure, 41 tons of silver, gold, Colombian emeralds, the best emeralds around, artifacts, you name it. A thousand silver bars, all were in chests. The chests had decomposed and they were in in the bottom of the ship and they had formed an artificial reef, a treasure reef where there were lobsters living there. The value of it at that time, four hundred and fifty million dollars. Not shabby. Way to go, Mel. You want to see some of it? Got a treasure exhibit right there in Florida. Now until 1975 there were no laws on uh, sunken treasure recovery in international water. Today, there's always court battles going on about who it is. Usually, if it's found in the state waters, the state gets 20% of the action. The rest go to the salvers and investors. And for good measure, here's a father and son team. They found $500,000 worth of loot in a 400-year-old cannon off the shores of Florida. It can happen to anybody. See this lady, what she's holding? 
Hang on and watch this one. August 15, 2010. That's Bonnie Schubert and her mother, Joe, 84 year old mother. They were doing some treasure hunting. Uh, water was about 15 feet deep near Vero Beach, Florida. They came across this little bauble there, picked it up and looked at it, and wow, that looks pretty good. Had it appraised. It apparently had come from the 1715 treasure fleet, one of them. And guess what the appraisal was? Now, this, oh, I forgot to tell you. 15 feet of water. 15 feet of water. They see this little stuff sparkling and they go get it. How much is it worth? Let's try $885,000 appraised value. Not too shabby. Anyway, we're getting close to the point that I think you people are looking forward to, I hope. A little bit of nostalgia. I remember these at my age. Well, I have really enjoyed this. We're going to have a drawing in a few minutes here. And I'd like to say some final words because this is my last presentation. <sighs> There's a saying, you can take up a person's money, but after all is said and done, you've only taken their money. But if you take up a person's time, you've taken a piece of their lives. And over these presentations that I've given, I want to thank all of you for having given me a piece of your life. If anybody asked and you enjoyed it, my name is David Greenstein. If I didn't meet your expectations, Lex Luthor. <laughs> so let me say, I also want to thank my research associate and my greatest supporter, my wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may your sails always be full, your waves small, and your rewards great. Thank you.